A leader is an angry person. Angry. Angry. Now, don't misunderstand that. Let us read Nehemiah chapter 5. Nehemiah 5. And when I say a leader, I don't mean a pastor only. I mean a leader in a church. I mean a leader in a house. Like a father, like a mother. And you as an individual, you ought, you ought to have leadership in your life. You don't just allow things to guide you anyhow. So now, a leader has this element of anger. We are not talking about the anger of the world. We are speaking about an anger towards things that are not right. Now, something happened in Nehemiah chapter 5. At this time, the country was going through problems. There was no money. And there was a famine. And you know what happens when there is a problem? When there is a desperation? When there is hunger? Sometimes people can get so, so careless. They can get themselves in credits. And the life of credit is a terrible life altogether. You know, when you tie yourself in credit, whatever progress you make, you feel like in life you don't make profit. No, it's not that you don't make profit. It's not that God doesn't support you. It's because of carelessness. I remember going through that in my life. There was a point in my life where I was living by credit. Whenever I wanted to pay rent, I would get a credit. And when I get that credit, when a salary comes, I now had to pay off that credit and look for another money to look for rent. So upon paying a credit, I would look for some money to pay now the rent. And what happens is, at a later point, someone gets caught up in a wave of credits. And that can bring depression. That can make you feel like there's nothing I'm doing. And that is not good. And this is what happened to the children of Israel in this passage. Now I want you to notice something here. Let us read verse 1. Nehemiah 5 verse 1. And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. Oh, there was a great cry in the land. Why was there a cry? People had done some terrible things. You know what started happening? A famine would get broke. Then they get uh, a loan. They would get a credit from a fellow Jew who used to do well. So he gives them the money. Then they fail to pay. And what do they do when they fail to pay? They go to their family land and say, anyway, we are not able to pay, but we can, in place of that loan, we can give you a portion of this land. And that is what started happening. You know, when you get a credit, it ties you, you become a slave to it. You can earn a salary and instead of being happy, you look sad on your salary day. Anyone who has ever gone through that? Anyone who's gone through that? Ah, okay, so that is familiar, isn't it? So, instead of being happy, well, you feel like you're working for other people. And if you're not even careful, 
your life you can even start sinning mungambo chimwa some people get into lies because of that two three people are demanding for their credit one you stop answering the phone you stop answering the sms and then the person drags you to the police why you become a slave you lose all your respect if you are in such a life begin to correct your life by giving up on some of these things whatever money you have start paying back slowly and never get into a debt trap again so these people are crying there's two for there were that said we our sons and our daughters are many Kindly open it for me. We are we our sons and our daughters are many therefore we take up corn for them that we may eat and live Now notice what they started doing They would say well I think in this family we are many This is what people started doing. Uh, maybe so that we can have something to eat. Our credit is so high. Meantime I think you can get uh, these my two children they can be working in your field. They'll be working for free. Let that be a part of uh, the payment for the loan I got. You realize what they were doing? They started selling each other. It started so simple. No, uh, instead of paying you since I don't have the money. Let me dig your field for free this year. Now, you know what that amounts to? It means you are a slave, right? Are you getting the picture? That is how far the issue went. There were also that said we have borrowed money for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyards. So others were failing to pay tribute to the Persian authorities. And in place of that they sell their land. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as the children and law we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them for other men have our lands and vineyards. Mhm. So akuti izo nkanda yathu mozi mozi na nkanda ya zikuru azibale watu. Bana watu bali monga bana wao. So ise tibale ta kwa imwe kwa kulisa bana watu na bamuna na wakazi kuti wakale kwa Kapolo tibena bana watu wachikazi. Wangakaroka kama ziwa mukapolo wakanganga bangaraka kudaloka kama ziwa mukapolo ndipo so walibe mpango yose yoti bwezera chifuwa minda ni zaveni Now remember Mukirani Nehemiah has come from Persia Nehemiah atikira kumalo ya Persia and he's the new governor He was a man of, he was a man of prayer Anali mtu wa mapembeni and all these things he heard he didn't take them kindly in verse six you read and i was very angry when i heard their cry and these words there were many other leaders in that time the nobles the elders they saw what was going on but they felt well people were well they are struggling 
I guess they have no means. But it takes a leader to see something wrong and get angry by what is going on. And if you look in history, many fights for freedom in South Africa, apartheid. It took men who were angry enough to turn things around. Now listen. When something wrong is happening, you always have these categories of people. People who adapt and conform. So well, there's nothing we can do. Boma ni boma. So there are people who, that's their ideology in life. I mean, there's nothing we can do. So they are passive and they go on with that. Now, if the whole world is made up of such people, the world would have remained as it was in the medieval times. But whenever there is oppression, there will always be few people who will look at the situation differently. And they will be angry enough to call a spade a spade and say this is not right. And always such people, they don't come in big groups or crowds. And when they start that fight, it is actually their own people who will be scared and, and discourage them. To say, hey, this can't happen. You put us in problems. That is what happened in South Africa. When Mahatma Gandhi started fighting for rights. After many years later on, of course, Gandhi went to India, continued to fight for the liberation of the Indians. After years and years, you have Nelson Mandela. You have all these freedom fighters who had to rise against a very oppressive regime of the apartheid. It was not easy. It took so many years. But these men were angry enough to confront a situation. You look over in America. During the time there was racism, a black man couldn't be offered an equal opportunity. It took men like Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. You know, they rose up and started fighting against the, the unfair, you know, uh, dealings of a white man. And today, America is what it is. Because of certain people like that. You know, they, you know, they decided to dare the oppressive regime. You know, there used to be a time where if you are in a vehicle, you can't sit where white men sit. But these men like Mandela, one day they broke the rules. They just entered the trains and sat where it was saying white only. And they say, we're also human beings. And you know, the police officers landed on them. They got arrested. But you know, there's something that happens when a person is angry. When a person says enough is enough, something right has to be done. And usually it takes few voices like that to die for many masses of people. Because America even has had her, even has had a black president. The thing what you and I don't say is the terrible history that, that had to precede that. Blacks used to be lynched. Killed like animals. Martin Luther King was assassinated. 
But what they were doing was sowing a seed of a better America. And today, to a large extent, that has become a reality where a black man can be in the cabinet, a black man can be a president. But remember the times when those few people were fighting. There were many cowards who were hiding behind the brick walls of their houses. But there were those courageous ones who went to the streets. And it always happens like that. Now that is politics. But the same principle also has been occurring in the kingdom of God. Amen. It has always taken men with insight to say the kingdom of God is near. The word of God is a rock upon which we need to stand. We don't need to build our faith on dogma and man's tradition. So, you have Martin Luther, the reformer. The man who started the reformation in German. At that time, the Roman Catholicism controlled everything. And every man lived in fear of the papacy. Including including the politicians. But it took one brave man to rise against the whole world. And he said, the just shall live by faith. We don't need to pay money to the Pope for our salvation. We don't need to worship idols. He read the scriptures and brought something out of the scriptures which made people look at it and say that is nothing but the truth. It took boldness. It took a holy anger. You know, Martin Luther was an angry man. He saw how the Catholic abused people. Got money from poor people. In order to enrich these clergymen. And he hit so hard against the system. So much that today. Catholic theologians they still don't have good kind words about Martin Luther they say he was full of anger he was full of temper but hey it took that temper to sober up people sometimes it takes anger to, to make people sober and that is what Nehemiah did he says, when the people started explaining to me why they sold their children, why they sold their land, I was very angry when I heard their cry. Brothers and sisters, it's not everything that you have to smile about. There are certain things they ought to make you angry. And that is not a sin. If your anger is directed against the wrong thing being done. You know the Lord Jesus was an angry person? When something wrong was done. You remember that time when the Lord entered the temple? And he found people selling doves. Other things. And I believe the religious people of that time, they had every good reason to do that. You know, in those times, people used to give sacrifices. You know, if you are poor and you want to give an offering, maybe it's a sin offering, you go buy some doves. Then you go to the temple and you give it to a priest. But well, some people looked at that and they had a good business idea. Oh, instead of someone looking for a lamb or a dove in the marketplace, 
I can just uh, make sure that I start selling near the temple grounds. Whoever wants uh, a duff for a sacrifice, and there was a good reason for that. Say, so, I mean, I'm offering a service instead of you having a hard time to go far buy something. Here it is. You know, like what they do when we have a funeral. Right at the burial place there. You don't have to worry to say, where will I get flowers? They sell those things right at the place where you bury. And well, that is good for you, right? These days we say, oh, we don't have to bother. They sell at the gravesite. Well, such a concept was brought near the temple of God. Before you realize it, the temple was surrounded by Tuntemba. This one is selling lambs, flock. This one is selling doves. And when someone wants to give an offering, he just buys that. And I believe many people saw that they saw nothing wrong in that. Because it seemed like a good idea. Why? Because everyone else was dead spiritually. It takes spiritual eyes to see a wrong thing. Is that right? It takes eyes which are attentive. Eyes which fear God. To say, no, this is not right. What happened when the Lord Jesus went there? You think it, he, he started educating the people? Say, no, you know, it is wrong to sell here. You know, when you read the, the scriptures, you think the Lord had time to take a stool to sit down and have and uh, have good Bible study? Hey, there are certain things you don't need to approach like that. Most of you have a mistaken view of the personality of Jesus. Because of what religion has taught you. Oh, you think Jesus used to speak very slowly. Why? Because the world has its own definition of gentleness and humbleness. They read about they read about the fruit of the spirit. Joy, patience. And then they have a kind of way to interpret that. Say <laughs> oh patience. You know, you need to be quiet, you need to, to be a good person. That's not God's definition of spiritual attributes. If that is the definition, then Jesus was not spiritual. You've read the scripture. When he saw people doing business on the temple grounds, what did he do? Prepare the strand. Oh, that was a prophet. Entered the temple grounds. He found people selling. Hey, he did not take a police permit. He just held the tables. They continued. And the Bible says there were even money changers. Now for expense, Katondo found itself in the temple. Dollars. Doesn't that sound like our modern churches? Our modern churches are nothing but Katondo Street. They are extant, money extant centers. Yes. What did the Lord Jesus do? He grabbed those tables, overturned them, took that strand started throwing them out. And he cried out, this is supposed to be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. There is a man 
I can't remember his name. He has sung a worldly song. Says Yesu Christu something like How many have heard that? The Lord Jesus come and weep these people again. I was driving one day and that song started playing. If there's a worldly song, I turned on the volume was that one. I say, oh yeah, these people need a worldly person to tell them what has gone wrong. A worldly person is able to see that Jesus, you need to come back and whip your children again. I say amen to that. Because business is back in the church. How many say amen to that? Yeah, business is back in the church. And it takes a worldly musician to sing the truth to the church. If the church needed to listen to gospel today, when I say the church, I mean these denominations which have turned houses of prayer into business centers. No, they don't need to listen to Don Moe. They don't need to listen to all this uh, gospel music you need to. They need to listen to that song. Jesus, come back, whip your people again. But he doesn't have to worry. The Lord is preparing a whip. And one day we'll see it. It's called the Great Tribulation. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus rebuked what was happening. He was angry with what was going on. If you see someone thinks he's humble and he smiles at wrong things, that's not being humble. That is being worldly and carnal. There are certain things that make a child of God happy. But there are certain things they should never put a smile on the face of a child of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And this is what Nehemiah said. The seven. He, he got angry when he was taught those words. The seven. Then I consulted with myself. And I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them ye exact every everyone of his brother and I set a great assembly against them hmm. so in night now it was leaders of Israel who were doing that because then they had money. They had some property. But the people they were leading were poor. And so they started giving loans and credits to their own brothers. Taking advantage of their poverty. You know, if you're a true believer, try to help out your brother. You, you don't have to add interest to whatever they borrow. And where you can, just help out. Do you understand that? Yes. But what happened here? In Nehemiah, he rebuked all the leaders. You are charging interest to your people. You are getting money from them. And he wanted to make his voice strong. So Nehemiah had to mobilize all the people, you know, many people of the land. Because people of the land, they had suffered also. He mobilized them to rise against these leaders. To say what you are doing is wrong. You are putting a heavy burden on the people. And I said unto them, verse 8, we after our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen, and will you even sell your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. 
Ninawauza kulingana na kukwanisa kwetu kisha ya Yuda hmm. watu tabagulanso wenza wanagulisiwa tabagulanso ya Yuda bale watu wanagulisiwa kuli maziko ya kujivunja manje imwe muzagulisa bale wanu kachividi can you imagine Kose, nice kuti kuti nice wagulisiwe kwa ife these people were ah, abantu wanakala cheti ndipo wanalibe mao yo yangu they were selling their own brethren wanagulisa bale wao and yet Nehemiah kama Nehemiah had spent money ana sense and drama to redeem certain people who had gone into captivity in Babylon. Here are people, true leaders, who had worked for some of these rulers. And they maneuvered through the system. Paying money to the Babylonian authorities to redeem some Jews to go back. But as Nehemiah goes back to Jerusalem, he finds some people who are selling the Jews because their family is in poverty. That angered him. He said, we've spent money to redeem some of the Jews. And here I come, I find you people selling your brothers and sisters. Selling the land. This is a wicked thing you are doing. And you know when Nehemiah was a leader he showed such a right example. He did not demand for people to pay him. Let's read down to verse 14. Moreover from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah from the 20th year even unto the 2 and 30th year over Texas the king that is 12 years I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken of them bread and wine beside 40 shekels of silver. Yeah, even their servants bear rule over the people, but so did not I because of the fear of God. Hmm. <laughs> And that's the seventh attribute of a leader. A true leader has fear. Not fear of people, no. I mean, Nehemiah didn't, wasn't afraid of these people. He rebuked them to their face. So the fear we are talking about is not fear fearing a fellow human being. Nehemiah he says, I did all these things because of the fear of God. A man who fears God, he wants things to be done right. When you see a leader is too accommodative, you look at his congregation, he's so patient with everyone. Even people who do wrong things, he can't rebuke them. He can't put things in the way they're supposed to be done. He wants to accommodate everyone, every Jim and Jack. It's one thing to have love, it's another thing to compromise for the sake of seeing a big number in church. You see what I'm saying? A true leader will put people in line of the word of God. He will tell them what they must hear. Not just entertaining them. With good thoughts and ideas. A true leader has fear. And it is this fear of God that makes him get angry when he sees a wrong thing. That's a character of a leader. And at a time when the church is going through troubles, this could be doctrinal problems and troubles or the rubbish of sinful living. 
It's a time that the church needs gallant leaders who can tell the people the truth. And one thing I can tell you, trouble is coming on this world. There's climate change. And now you hear about the cyclone which hit Mozambique coming through Zimbabwe. And we're told it's heading to Zambia. I'm so thankful that last year those who had attended some prayer and fasting I had talked about that uh, I kept having these dreams about three times seeing a mighty wind which was coming with rain and water in one dream I saw climbing on a mountain and the waters kept rising and it, it, it affected the southern region of Africa. And you know, those dreams gave me worry. What I had in my mind was, Lord, is this about the Great Tribulation or what? No. That was worrying me. Because Great Tribulation is one thing I don't want to think about. But you know, it's one thing when God shows you something, but another when you give it your own interpretation. And the dreams kept coming over and over again. Until the, the, the third one which I had. When I looked up in the sky, and you know, like a... Uh, uh, a big wind which was twisting the clouds. And it became dark everywhere. But I didn't panic. I got my family, we held hands. And I said, let us pray. And that should be our approach. We don't know which path this cyclone will take. But I've always believed the Lord speaks to his people over these things. Now that doesn't mean you are immune, but it means we need to pray. We need to prepare ourselves. Don't put all your mind and your heart and your thoughts on carnal things of this world. They are but passing away. Praise God. Amen. And just be alert this week. It may affect portions of Eastern Province. Luapula and these other places. It may come through Lusaka, we don't know. But that is what the Sadiq map warning is showing. But what I request of you, be in prayer. You know, when you are in prayer, the Lord gives you eyes. And the kind of prophetic word God gives to his people. It's not about you getting rich and prosperous. And like there are more important things God gives us. But when you are not found in prayer meetings, you'll be walking like a blind person. When we say there will be prayer and fasting, you don't want to be part of that. You'll be missing out on what the Lord is speaking. Amen. Amen. Shall we start? And as we, as I travel to India, we are getting in prayers. We can't all come in one place. But if you can, please do so. But all those who are in Mtendere, those who can join, that is, we'll start our prayers Thursday, uh, uh, Friday, Saturday. But Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We've been praying and fasting. We are seeking for the Lord to speak, to guide, to inspire, to give vision. Amen. So those of those who were there in the last fasting, we saw the hand of the Lord. And if you are not able to participate in this fasting, you can just write a prayer request if you want us to remember you in prayer. Then we'll pray for you. Then uh, if you live in other places like those in Kalundu, you can make arrangements as well. Maybe you can, you can gather at the deacon's place there. Those in Mtendere East, you can gather. It will be every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 18 to 19 hours. So 
and pray the way the Lord leads you. And if the Lord speaks something, he is communicated so that other groups, they know what the Lord is speaking. Praise God. Amen. Shall we close our eyes as we pray?